Hello, everyone, and welcome to our presentation. My name is Allie. I'm Angelina. I'm Jenna. I'm Kylie. And I'm Joel. And we are the True Cost of Local group. We are extremely excited to share with you what our research has shown. But for now, please sit back, relax, and prepare to be enlightened. So to give, a, to give everyone a little more information about our project and our sponsor, Edith, from TME Farms, our group um, was originally tasked with researching and investigating the comparison between the cost of local versus commercial products. So originally, we defined local as being the area in which all of TME Farms' customers fell within, which was about a 100-kilometer radius. And then we defined commercial as being the process and steps in which grocery stores acquire their meat products. The main focus of our project was discovering the cost of various different meat products and then dissecting and further considering what these costs represented in terms of feed, housing, processing, packaging, and transportation. All of the costs, as all costs are not just simply monetary costs, we decided to split our cost investigation into these four categories to further discover the different places that consumers' dollars go when they purchase a piece of meat from either a local farm versus a grocery store. So throughout our whole process, our group kept two main goals in mind. Our first goal was to try and tie everything we did back to the main core ideas of our course through the use of the three central pillars of sustainability. And then our second goal was what we called finding the why. So something Edith really emphasized during all our meetings with her throughout the three week was the importance of her business's core values. So TME Farms' main goal is to supply healthy food for families. And it was really clear that TME Farms strive to provide top quality products that did not sacrifice or forego either the welfare of the animals, the consumer purchasing the product, or the overall environmental footprint of the land. Edith had explained to us that her hope for, for one aspect of our group project deliverable was finding a way to encourage local shopping through assisting potential customers in discovering their why to shopping local especially customers within the target age demographic of 20 to 40 years old. Edith explained how finding a why is the process of getting our deliverable into people's hands with a message that is relevant and convincing as to why buy local. And she warned us against simply providing surface level facts and resources as these do a poor job at convincing consumers to alter their spending habits. So a little more background information about our sponsor is that TME Farms is managed by both Edith and Murray Tabler, and they are a micro meat farm located near Roseland, and they are part of the food artisans of Camrose County. Um, as a mobile food vendor, they sell meat at different markets around the Camrose area, with their main products being beef, pork, chicken, eggs, as well as a large variety of ready-to-eat goods. And then lastly, to the side here, we've also included the logo that we developed as one of our components of the deliverable package we constructed for Teamy Farms. Um, in the hopes that Edith can use this logo in whatever future potential capacity she sees fit. So why is all this important from a sustainability perspective? Um, part of the problem with trying to convince people to make more sustainable lifestyle choices is that everybody has their own idea of what this might look like, especially due to the many varying and often broad definitions of sustainability. Most very general definitions refer to at least three primary pillars or branches of sustainability, which are usually social, economic, and environmental aspects. Sometimes a fourth branch might be added um, depending on the definition used, which is often considered to be cultural slash human or political. All of these aspects must be considered holistically to find a balance that allows humans to use resources as responsibly as possible for the longest amount of time possible. A suggestion we've probably all heard in regards to making more sustainable choices is to limit meat consumption or cut it out of your diet entirely, as meat usually takes large amounts of food, energy, and water to produce, as well as contributes to carbon emissions and greenhouse gases. While cutting out meat from your diet is viable for some people, it, for many people it's not. So being informed on what you're consuming and where it's coming from can make all the difference. Plant-based substitutes may not be easily available and therefore costly, not only economically, but also may cause harm through carbon emissions from transport, transporting the food long distances or monocultures planted to grow the food in bulk. For some, choosing to shop local, for meat products especially, is more viable and sustainable when all kinds of costs are taken into account. Not just your monetary and economic costs, but your environmental and social costs as well. 
I've touched just briefly on some of the economic and environmental aspects, but a pillar that often takes a backseat when discussing sustainability is the social aspect. Shopping local can not only reduce environmental impacts, but it also can provide a food a source of food security. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen shortages in grocery stores of certain project products, largely due to either high demands that grocery stores can't keep up with and in interruptions due to transportation. Many borders shut down entirely in the early beginnings of the pandemic and food was unable to travel longer distances or across borders, as well as may have been affected by job losses through business closures. While grocery store shelves may have been empty, many local producers still had a plethora of food left ready to be sold. Buying local then supplied an income for local businesses in a time where many people had lost their income, but it also limits the chances of external factors such as transport limitations interrupting the process of getting food, in our case meat, from harvest to your plate. Many people assume local food is more expensive, but that's not always the case. Joel will further break down this cost in just a moment. With that being said, we invite you to think about what not about not only what sustainability means to you, but also to think of costs not only in monetary terms. All right, so it goes without saying that costs are a significant driver for consumer behavior. It was found that for majority of people, cost is in fact a major hindrance uh, to them with regards to their access to local food. A common misconception is that local food is always more expensive, as emphasized by the recent class poll we did in our discussions. However, as you can see from our table, which to our surprise, it was very close. The products on the shelves in grocery stores and local farm products were very close in terms of the differences in prices. For the most part, people tend to forego more expensive products for more cheaper ones or similar ones, as it is perceived to give them more value for their money. As our findings demonstrate, the opportunity cost in picking the non-local product at times, although it may be cheaper, is not always worth it. The welfare for the animal, as you will see, is significantly disregarded. When evaluating costs, we decided to focus our attention on the non-monetary aspects, such as human welfare and animal welfare, as well as our overall environmental footprint. Our costs were spread across four main areas that we usually will see later on, which is feed, housing, transportation, processing, and packaging. We will explore these four main areas and how they intersect with human welfare and animal welfare. But overall, our overarching context will be uh, looking at it from a sustainability standpoint. During our research, we conducted a continuous comparison between the true cost of local food uh, and buying local, for example, via TME farms, as opposed to buying from commercial industries via grocery stores. When it comes down to feed, we found that TME farms gives all their animals hay and grain that is locally sourced and is herbicide free. All of their chickens and pigs are also given a soy free diet. On the other hand, with the commercial industry, this isn't the case at times. Commercial farms are less transparent with, their, with regards to their sourcing of their foods and their pesticide use. This actually really isn't their fault. It's largely due to the negative social media stigma associated with pesticide use and the, the relative health implications that their chemicals may have on us as humans. Looking at housing and shelter, TME Farms keeps all the animals outside in unheated barns and uses straw as bedding to keep them warm. They use low profile electric fences to deter predators as opposed to shooting them. They do this to reduce any unnecessary stress that may be uh, cost to the animals due to sudden and loud noises. TME Farms recognizes the importance of human socialization when it comes to maintaining a stress-free environment for the animals. Hence, they, they, they maximize the amount of human contact that animals have to maintain their overall animal welfare uh, while they're on the farm. In contrary, the commercial industry takes a slightly different approach when it comes to housing and shelter. Pigs, for example, are held in metal barred cages Chickens are placed in large barns with concrete floors, which often results in physical and behavioral problems due to lack of socialization and exercise. So the next category we looked at was transportation. TME Farms transports their animals to Strom and Forsberg to be processed. And both butcher shops are no longer than a 40 minute drive. So due care is given to animals during this time. 
Some ways in which they ensure a stress-free travel include keeping animals who are familiar with each other together, giving plenty of room for animals to move around or lay down, eliminating the potential for overcrowding by never filling the trailer to capacity, and working to maintain humane atmospheric conditions. On the other hand, large-scale corporations transport large vol volumes of animals for upwards of seven hours at a time. And currently, while there are governmental recommendations, there are no regulations or legislation for transportation conditions. Um, the last category we looked at was processing and packaging. Commercial processing is lengthy and often involving extra additives to extend shelf life and add flavor. Meat is often packaged in modified atmosphere packaging, which is more commonly referred to as MAP, which removes the air and replaces it with other gases to control and enhance flavor, as well as preserve more appealing colors. The image on the left of this slide shows an example of this packaging. TME Farms does not use herbicides, pesticides, or antibiotics during the raising and processing of their products, as Joel previously mentioned. However, they do add preservatives to smoked products as per government regulation. As far as packaging is concerned, they opt for a more environmentally friendly approach, using paper to package beef and vacuum suction pla pa plastic <laughs> for other meat products, so customers are able to see the product prior to purchase. The image on the right of this slide is a meat box made by TME Farms. So overall, we found it was difficult to find specific information on the transportation and processing from grocery store brands, which speaks to the lack of transparency of commercial production. When customers pick up a steak or package a bacon from the grocery store, there's a large separation between processing the animal and getting the food to the plate. Because of this, customers are desensitized to the process. Local farms often have a greater connection to their customers, increasing transparency in the process and providing customers with peace of mind, knowing they're supporting ethical, sustainable practices, primarily because they're actually aware of what's going on behind the scenes. Having said this, because it is becoming a primary concern and more consumers are wanting to make sustainable decisions, many large-scale corporations are making sustainability a major goal. When looking at their websites, we found that they have goals to become more environmentally friendly or decrease the use of antibiotics. However, the majority are not really goals, but rather blanket statements promising sustainable practices. But regardless, this is a step in the right direction. To sum it up, taking into account the previously discussed categories, the main difference is in the volume of animals to feed, house, transport, and process. The major risks faced in commercial production are in regards to bacterial contamination and animal welfare. Rather, with local farms, there are less intermediate steps and fewer animals processed at a time, so more attention can be given to detail, significantly improving product quality. So with all this research, we decided to construct a Google website as our primary deliverable. Edith's goal is to reach a new 20 to 40 year old age demographic, so we thought an online resource would be better than making like a newspaper for them. It contains information about TMA farms while also illustrating the monetary and non-monetary costs of local and commercial food. We believe this is a creative way to inform the public and help them understand what their product choices represent. On the right, you can see an excerpt of a blog post that we wrote. Their old website had a blog section, so we thought we would implement this idea into our own site. The blog posts highlight the importance of sustainability and discuss environmental issues with commercial meat production. On the website, we also included a list of benefits from eating locally sourced products. In conjunction with this section, we made a promotional video for Edith to show at markets. It has various photos of her farm and her quotes from our group of reasons why we shop local. And then we also created a few posters that can be handed out or shared on Teamy Farms Facebook and Instagram account. Social media is another way to reach a younger customer base since we're all at home on our phones due to the pandemic. On the slide, you can see a few of the ones that we made. They advertise our group's website via QR code, but also promote sustainable farming and buying local. Following the cessation of this course, we brainstormed some potential ideas for next steps that other groups could look into. Since Edith mentioned that her goal is to cut down on fuel consumption and feeding costs, a different 
project could research how local farms can continue with sustainable practices while also minimizing extra monetary costs. And then another project idea could be developing a lesson plan for grade school students as a way to introduce the topic of sustainability at a young age. Overall, we hope that you are able to see how the monetary cost of local meat is not drastically different from grocery stores, but where they do differ are their processes in which they operate and the main scope of focus being either ethics and environmental sustainability or production and efficiency. With that said, thank you all for taking the time to listen to our presentation. And at this time, we are happy to answer any questions you may have.